All right, lads, it's Judgment Day. I know that we've been having fun doing some pulls for Lady Avalon, maybe Archetype Earth, maybe even splurged a little bit on the Dome and Ibuki banners like myself, but all the fun in games have to stop because true despair has dropped over here on the NA side of things, and that is Ruler Scotty. If you're a newer player and you don't know why, this banner is kind of a big deal. This is one of those major must summon characters. Now, you could go to the comments and say, well, I don't need to necessarily summon Scotty. I don't want to use quick units and that's perfectly fine if you're just okay with not using any of the immensely powerful options that we have under the quick card type like say the new count of monte cristo seno Riku, who comes out later on this year tyra mhx alter skahawk who also just by the way got a ridiculously powerful buff Juan Gina, who comes out next year i mean you could go on and on even older options like Kama are still immensely powerful quick options that you do have the ability to use but if you want to swear all of those guys off and you just don't want to do Black Grail quick farming, which, yeah, is a thing with Ruler Scotty, then fine, by all means, return to your tired old daily routine of loading up double Koyanskaya or double Castoria. Have fun. Me and the boys will be concocting the most base team compositions possible and spamming green cards like our life depends on it. So with all that being said, and a little bit of shade thrown at people in the comments, we're going to be talking about Ruler Scotty in today's video. And yes, I will just give you the TLDR. If you want to do anything with quick units, specifically on the looping end of things, then I think Ruler Scotty is an absolute must have. But I still think she is incredibly good to go for if you want to use quick units in more challenge quest oriented content because me myself having caster scotty on the jp side of things but not ruler scotty do sometimes find myself wanting that extra ruler scotty instead of the caster scotty specifically sometimes the buster crit stuff does come up and the additional quick buff also comes up as well as scenarios where the bosses might drain your stars, having somebody, which will sound funny, but in a quick comp that generates stars when that should be something you're already doing can be very, very nice. There are just some of those scenarios that I found that even in just challenge quest oriented content, it does kind of come up. But strap in and get comfortable. Make sure you drop a like in the video if you enjoy types of content like this. And make sure you subscribe if you find this video to be helpful, informative, or entertaining. Also, one thing that I do want to let people know, kind of just at the beginning of the video, is that the stream schedule has changed a little bit. You may have noticed that on Monday, I went live. So what I'm going to be doing from now on is on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, I'm going to dual stream on Twitch and YouTube because, you know, some people have like YouTube premium. They prefer to watch on YouTube. Some people would like to use the, I would say, superior Twitch Twitch chat and watch over there. Regardless, I'm going to be compensating for both of you guys, right? So I'll be dual streaming Monday, Wednesday, Friday, starting at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and we'll probably play FGO for a couple of hours. Then Tuesdays and Thursdays will be uh, other game stuff. Like currently, I'm playing through Elden Ring right now on Tuesdays and Thursdays over on the Twitch side of things. And it's the same time, about like 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, go for a couple hours and then call it a stream. But just wanted to throw that out there for people that were like, why were you live on Monday? Was it just for the polls? But no, it's kind of like a new shaking up of the streaming schedule type thing. So just wanted to throw that out there if you're ever wanting to attend one of the streams or you have questions you want to have answered live, whatever have you. That being said, let's start getting into Scotty's effects and skills. Now, I'm not going to be treating this like a normal video. I'm just going to kind of let the gameplay in the background almost speak for itself because, again, she's a support. I think it's better to look at the effect that she has on some of the units rather than just rattle off what she does. Now, that being said, I am going to rattle off what she does in the background, but because the skills kind of need to mesh together, you know, individually, it's not like, oh, well, that's a good skill by itself, but I need to have more context as to what it does. I'm just going to run through them like that. So on the one hand, you have Scotty's first and second skill that are providing a quick buff. The first skill is giving you a 50% quick buff, which is the same thing that Caster Scotty does. The second skill is giving you an additional 15% quick buff, which with double ruler Scotty and the reason she's better when it comes to looping over Caster Scotty is that you are getting 30% more quick than you are with the original one, which means not only more quick damage, but the NP gain of your quick cards is going to be improved. So some servants that might struggle a little bit when it comes to looping are actually going to be pushed over the edge a little bit and some of those servants that are already really good at looping could start doing things like black grail farming quick is also immensely helped by the fact that her second skill instead of doing a defense down is an attack buff and if you don't get why that is more important you carry the attack buff through all three nodes whereas you can only use the defense down on say probably the second and last node i think that is commonly what people will do with their caster scotty 
as it does ensure that you're getting through the second and third node, but also for the second node, you're getting more overkill because you're lowering their defense, you're doing more damage, but you don't have to worry about all that when you think about Ruler Scotty because she just gives you the attack buff, right? It's really, really simple. Now, you'll also notice that she's giving you a 100% buster crit damage and a 15% buster buff, which with double Ruler Scotty, that is a 30% buster buff with 200% buster crit damage. Now, you may be wondering, well, does that really matter? Because this is a quick team comp. Like, why would I care about doing buster crits? Well, consider the fact that Caster Scotty only gives you the 100% quick crit damage. If you use a combination of Ruler and Caster Scotty, if you're rocking, say, a double quick double buster deck, four of your cards have 100% crit damage for the next three turns, which is really insane. Think about how Proto Merlin or Merlin give you 100% crit damage, but it's limited to one turn. Effectively, they kind of give you that, except, you know, the arts card is left out, but I mean, it's now the quick hybrid buster team comp. We don't really care about that. And you're effectively getting 100% crit damage on all of your cards, which is really, really nice. When you think about it like that, it's a really nice way to change up the quick team comps a little bit in the same way that for arts team comps, I believe they change it a little bit by trying to incentivize that you bring Lady Avalon with your Castoria to kind of change things up a little bit. And I think that's what they're doing over here as well, because when she gives you the battery on her third skill, she also gives you Buster Star Wait for that one turn that she gives him the battery. So you could try to take advantage of those Buster crits. And like I mentioned towards the beginning of the video, Ruler Scotty also just bombs 15 stars on her third skill and gens 15 stars every turn for three turns, which can be really nice if, say, your quick unit is not the most solid star gener, which shouldn't be as much of an issue considering that they buffed how quick chains work and just doing a quick lead gives you more of that 20% chance to crit for the entire brave chain which is very helpful but again sometimes you have bosses that are going to be lowering your storage and they're going to steal your stars stuff like that does happen and so the fact that she can also help out in those scenarios or again you have somebody that's not as good of a star gen that's just something nice for her to be able to do and so while you will probably look at her as just okay bring double ruler scotty then i don't know plug suit in an oberon maybe or plug suit in the original caster scotty and that's the farming you're going to be doing don't discount her for the ability she has going into cqs because her np even though it is an offensive NP and you'll probably just be using it for, you know, quick looping and stuff along those lines does actually have an effect that's useful going into CQs. The fact that it's AOE and it reduces all enemies NP gauge by one, it does give her a little bit of survivability to the party, but much like the original Caster Scotty, it's kind of like an air quotes thing where Caster Scotty's NP is really strong. You just rarely see it because in say an arts team you're always doing arts brave chain so even if you're not really focusing on using say avalon or castoria's np they're just getting passive 20 percent and the odd 30 and 20 percent from each other's charismas and np's kind of just flowing everywhere that's not really a thing for quick supports right now you kind of have to go for your np or go specifically for brave chains that will get them access to their np if that's something you need but hey it is there when it does come up it is nice it's in the same way that i don't really ever go for koya and skaya's np when i'm doing challenge quest with her but when it does come up it is helpful in being able to reduce the entire enemy party's np gauge as well as charge your own party's np gauge as well unfortunately for scotty she doesn't really have that overcharge effect that i think koya and skaya has where you just give everybody like that 20 percent battery that would have been nice but i guess they also wanted her to just be a really good quick looper if you don't have anybody because lawful power mod is not the craziest thing but it's at least something right it's not bad it gives her some type of a niche as well as getting the NP damage when fighting on water side, that's also not bad in and of itself, especially with pretty decent hits of six on that NP and a really solid 0.78% NP gain. All in all, I've pretty much spoken at length and ad nauseum about this servant pretty much for the entirety of the year. I have been called the quick defender because of Scotty ever since she came out where I was like, this is going to revitalize quick and nobody listened to me. And then we started doing black grail farming and then people were like, oh, this is really crazy. But I also don't blame people, right? You were able to do black grail farming with Charlemagne once this ruler Scotty dropped, but then nobody really cared about that, right? Because the new and hot thing to be doing was beating up 90 plus plus nodes with, you know, your Koyan Sky and your Oberon teams, just bursting through things and brute forcing your way through them. 
because to be fair, it was also a few months after where people were really starting to consider the multi-cortex and were kind of getting associated with what that actually meant because the general player base at the time was just, this is way too hard. I, if, if I can't beat it, then I just can't beat it. I don't have Oberon, I can't do it. But having the hindsight of the last two years, seeing the JP side of things, then, you know, NA players playing on the JP side, having that time has been able to, you know, kind of get people prepared for that. And so I think Ruler Scotty will do a bit better over here on the NA side of things because we know how impactful she will actually be. We've seen that last two years of testing and we've seen what everybody's been able to do with this servant and that makes her all the better for when she initially drops later tonight or she should already be up by the time this video goes up. But if I did schedule it correctly, it should be tonight. So look forward to that and I hope that all of your roles go as well as they possibly can. I have put myself in a bit of a precarious situation for the content. I could have just saved my 900 Saint Quartz and guaranteed got Scotty off pity, but where's the fun in that? You know, if we're going to be doing a summoning thing, there's got to be a little bit of suspense. There's got to be a little bit of drama. So I hope you guys will also join me for my polls that should be going up on Friday, I think is when we're going to be doing them. Unless Scotty went live yesterday at reset, in which case we'll do them later today when this video goes up. You'll be able to figure it out. You know, if it's Wednesday and her banner's live, we'll be doing the summonings on those. If it's Friday and her banner's live, we'll be doing the summoning, you know, over there. You know, it's whatever. You guys will be able to figure it out. I'll figure it out. Time zones are hard. <laughs> so you'll, we'll, we'll get there when we get there. But with all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. You guys have just a nice rest of your day and I'll catch y'all on the next one.